but I'm Holly. And I'm Jordan. And we met down sailing Tasmania together on the Windward Bound tall ship. And um, we sort of met in 2019, would you say? Yeah. So you met with Sarah Parry? We met with Sarah Parry, yeah. yeah. She, she was the yeah, headmaster there, but yeah. And we were both living on board. the story, yeah, both yeah. aboard at the time. I was aboard for two years there, and you were sort of on and off for four years. You did a, a, oh, wow. youth, yeah. a youth voyage with them. And was it mostly like trips up and down the East Coast, around to Port Davey, that sort yeah. of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was training yeah, into Port Davey for the adult uh, voyages. We did them until every year. Yeah. Yeah. Into them, 10 days. Yeah, yeah, well, eight days. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And um, then you had enough of that and thought, we're going to go sailing ourselves. And so tell me how um, tell me how you came across this beautiful boat. I was just scrolling Facebook one day and we've sort of been in the market for a timber boat for a little while and occasionally I send Holly ridiculous uh, things I find on boat, boats online or, or on Facebook and I've come across this Morris Griffiths and I sent it to Holly and, it's, and it only said 800 bucks on there and I was like, oh, you must be dreaming. So I sent it to Holly and she was like, oh, you've got to get it now. Like, you've got to purchase it now. So I got in contact with the owner and he was like, I don't want any money for the boat. I just want you to pay the hard stand fees for a month and it's all yours. Where, Where was it? it? Here, right here. Oh. So it's been up here for two years. We believe around two years. So, and then, yeah, that, that was, and that was ours. He so. just wanted someone that so would do just it justice. Yeah, go to a good home. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, zero dollars is yeah. sort of too much really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Timber, timber boats never free. So. We were seeing boats, you were sending me boats that were like for 40k and it was like a fixer upper and I was like, man, how do you <laughs> do it? There, yeah. If you start in there, yeah. yeah. Working at the moment or yes, as yeah. well as we doing We both work full time. Holly works for in, in shipping, a for shipping, shipping company, line. Yeah. Right. And I'm a second in a third year ship ride apprentice. Who with? Uh, Brendan Harvey, Harvey's boat coach. Oh, yeah, yeah. Williamstown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Fantastic. Yeah. So I've been, yeah, a couple of years, three years with him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. And, um, I mean, have you got a bit of a sort of idea of your time frame on this? I mean, I know it's hard and I'm not like, yeah, yeah, so, but, you know, it's a, it's a ridiculous, ridic but in your mind, in your <laughs> mind, you'll have a bit of an yeah, idea, what, yeah. like a couple of years or? We want to get the underwater or the hull sorted out, sort of basically as quickly as possible. So we want to sort of get her in the water by summer this year, yep. just so, because she planked in Jarrow, we wanted to get that taken up yep. as good as possible. So she'll probably go in looking pretty shabby, Oh, like we'll paint the tops on and all sort of stuff, yeah. but the deck and the superstructure will probably go in looking pretty sad. But we just want to start getting her taking up, and then while yeah. that's taking up, we can work on the superstructure and all that sort of stuff that doesn't need to be done uh, out of the water. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And um, and will you keep it here, or we'll keep it here for a bit, and then we'll get the motor in and all that sort of stuff hooked up, and then we'll probably motor around to Williamstown where. I'll Sort of, yeah, easier to work on. Yeah, closer to yeah. home, and we'll be able to work on it up yeah. there a bit better. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. And what do you actually know about our history? So, all I know, Morris Griffith, he was the editor of Yachting Something magazine and yeah. for, for like 40 years in, yeah, the, UK. in the UK. Yeah, and yeah. he designed a whole he, uh, sort of a lot of smaller boats, small but, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the biggest, oh, the biggest you can sort of find relevant, readily available was a 38 foot yacht called uh, Good Hope, I think, it was right. it, there was a plan like that, but I think it primarily designed boats for uh, shoal, sort of shoal draft boats on the east coast of the UK. Yeah. But we're more of the opinion that this was loosely based yeah. off of Morris Griffiths, maybe right. not. I think the plans were ri ripped off. Maybe he didn't design sort of, yeah, 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 Do you think maybe somebody in Western Australia, Western Australia, got some plans and maybe modified, modified them a little slightly, bit? Yeah, because she's got a real deep draft, which I don't think is quite typical of Morris yeah. Griffith's design. So she draws mm. 1.8 yeah. in the water, which is 40 foot long, so. But we're fortunate that a previous owner yeah. has written a book about her. So he, he did write a book of yeah. her history, what of he his, knows of yeah. it, and oh, his adventures. That. Yeah. So that's helped us. Obviously, lot, yeah. most of the time you inherit a boat and you've got Not no much, idea yeah, about, it. Yeah. about it. Oh, that's but, fantastic. Yeah, so he, he did write a book. Yeah. And I always believe a bit that, you know, if you can, if you can get a bit of the history, it just sort of, helps carry you through the hard times of yeah. restoration because yeah. you know you understand the whole lineage and you understand that the boats had a tough history and it sort of deserves to be looked after if you don't know any of that it's almost makes it too easy to give up when it's hard you know um so 1950s western australia yeah yeah um, i think yeah launched in 1951 in wa um it, 
uh, built for the Danish consulate back in the day oh. in, yeah, in WA. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So it was the, the Danish ambassador. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And apparently he went and handpicked all the Jarrah trees for the planking and all sort of stuff. So it's Jarrah planking. Jarrah planking. The jar, the, she did have... Uh, everything was Jarrah, the ribs were Jarrah, uh, stringers are all Jarrah, but we're replacing the ribs with Merbu ribs. Uh, uh, all of them? Yeah, we, we have done all of them, yep, yep, well, more or less. So, we, we're, so that's what so we're up to at the moment. Two, two, two lots together. together? Yeah, epoxy, we're going to epoxy them in, so they're going to be about 40 mil thick, and we're making them up out of 5 mil layers, just so we can slide them in up. Cause yeah. Uh, without taking the stringers out, we can slide them up in from the bottom or down through the top, and then we'll epoxy them all in. Not to the hull, obviously, and then we'll yeah. rope, rope and rivet, which we've done, all the rope and rivetings done from the engine room up to the stem. Yeah. And now we're just in through this section, replacing every other rib, and then feeding in our new Merbu ones, and then oxy them, and then we'll rip out keep all the moving. other ones. Yeah. And keep, keep going keep on. The shape yeah, the keep the yeah. shape, yeah. But everything up there has all been replaced, and we're just scarving into the, coming down from the shear clamp, we've just scarfed in to the remaining grip, because it's all in really good nick. And, and um, scarfed in from the keel as well. All that in six months? Yeah, well, yeah. That, that's all that the previous owners all done that work. We just went through We've rope, rope and riveted and we did a heap of plugging in the hull, all the old uh, fastening holes and all that sort of stuff. Mm. And then so you're taking a typical patch where you it's feel like, you know, the progress isn't, I mean, I mean in your mind, you know, you're making progress, mm. but suddenly it's going to become a whole lot easier. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 definitely. And things will start changing and looking good. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. We'll start <laughs> painting the top sides and all that sort yeah. of stuff. And Fantastic. Even people going past, they're like, they don't see any. Sorry, <clears throat> they don't see any change. But we're inside working, and to us, there's so much. But yeah. they're walking past, looks the same every day. Same, yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, what are, so you, what are you doing? doing? <laughs> yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> Get yourself one of these. These will be easier yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, and what's the sort of? Have you got a long-term plan? Are you, is it? Is it a? Is it a bit of a Pacific cruise? This or? will be yeah, live aboard for us. It'll probably be a family home one day. Mm. Uh, you know, kids on board and whatever yeah. Um, and yeah we'll just take it up and down the east coast or where it, wherever it takes us the plan will be you know once on the shipwright might be able to work yep. we can find our way up and down working as a shipwright there's no so shortage of work uh, for shiprights yeah, at the I moment that was the sort of plan along the way <laughs> yeah. so I think that's the plan that stands at the moment fantastic so, yeah. fantastic and um one thing, the the rig, are you going to keep the aluminium sticks? It did, you, it used to have um, Oregon, Oregon yeah. spars, but then there was a really tall rig, and at some stage they shortened the rig and changed it to aluminium. So and was it always a, what is it, catch? Catch, yeah, it was always a catch, yeah, it was. Mm. Um, so I think we'll probably keep the aluminium. Yeah, aluminium I mean, they look pretty yeah. good, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we, we'll keep the Oregon uh, booms just because it's sort of nice to that. Yeah. of what you I mean obviously you've got the hull and stuff but you know engine new engine do you have to put a new engine we've got in? a it has a Ford Sabre down there 80 horsepower um, we actually does it work just, yeah we had the mechanic come today he's gonna give it a once over for us and then she'll oh, you know we're going well we'll go just straight back in right all, all old school sort of mechanically injected which we sort of want it pretty um, carefree we don't want any mm. computers or anything mm. doing pretty all that simple. sort of stuff pretty yeah. simple sort of stuff so to go in um, yeah and then she's going to be pretty basic, or not uh, basic sort of system wise, but sort of luxuriously fitted out. Yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. Keep it simple. Keep, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Minimum electric. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So we, we yeah. won't go lithiums. We'll go AGM batteries right. and all that sort of stuff, and a bit of solar. Um, um, yeah. And you're going to do. You probably haven't got this far. Do some an auto helm on it. And yeah, she's. I think she had one back in the day. All hydraulic steering. So yeah. Oh, it's that. hydraulic yeah, steering. Yeah, hydraulic right. steering. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a ram back there somewhere. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, that'll stay. And, yeah. 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 And decks. Obviously, like looking here, they've had. They've yeah. been. They've been. Um, yeah. What have they been? Oh, they've been. It's like a cork paint or something they've put on top. I think it used to leak. Maybe even from when it was even launched, from it leaked. In the book, so I do you think, think this was original? This, the this t yeah, this sort the of paint, tink or yeah. whatever it is. But we are going to rip it up, and to be the honest, whole thing. the whole thing, the deck will probably go as well. We're just going to start with taking the paint off and see what. See We've how, done that see up forward, and yeah. she's starting we'll to leak. Yeah, I think a new deck is on the card. Yeah. Do you think this little coach roof is original? This was added on. I'm, remember when it was it's quite cute yeah. I quite like it yeah. do you like it? it yeah yeah it's nice I've got no, 
you know, I'm no, normally would say, oh, get rid of it. It's yeah, like, yeah. But I actually think it's quite, it's quite, it's quite, quite. It looks nice too. Someone's taking the time to design it well. You, you know, look how comfortable it's yeah. going to be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you when you're sailing <laughs> along, you know? and you're going to have some nice benches in here or yeah. something. You know, and yeah, then, a nice sort of L bench there. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll be snug as anything. Yeah. It'll be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Get guys get some time off to do this, why aren't you working today? Oh, I just annual leave today, but yeah, we're, we're normally here. Off. We normally come down Friday night and we're here. We, we stay on board Jeez. Friday, Saturday and go back to go back Sunday. Pretty back discipline to back do to that. Monday, yeah. Yeah, I think most people say we're crazy, don't yeah. they? Especially <laughs> all our friends that are like our age at work and whatnot yeah. are like got these elaborate weekend plans. We're like, no need to share, share <laughs> ours. We'll be doing the same thing, but... <laughs> No, we love it. Yeah. Yep. Have you thought about the interior layout? I mean, of course you have. We but. have. It changes sort of every week, but we're sort of thinking maybe like a big sort of U-shaped uh, settee on the port side there. And then we're thinking the head might be up sort of up where we're sitting. And there'll be a V-berth, which will be our cabin. And then a sort of long linear galley on on the starboard side there and Which, underneath the cockpit would there be quarter berths or no nah, storage no nah, there's two two big sort of wing tank uh, uh diesel tanks and right. then uh, the engine room but there is sort of there was a couple of shelves which you can access from outside with with a lot of storage right um but yeah no no quarter berths back there but two two berths in the half cabin right and, and the, oh, of course i forgot about the and half the cabin yeah. will convert uh, to, a, to another probably double as well and so do you think the aft cabin will be mostly visitors visitors and then probably kids one day yeah yeah yeah, yeah right yeah. so to get the hull in the water what's the priorities now obviously finishing the ribs finishing the ribs and then we're going to uh, we're replacing all the butt blocks as well on the joins of the planking so we've gone through and we've got some spotted gum for them so we're replacing yeah. all of them and then we're going to give it a really light cork uh, with oakum under the water and then cotton in the top sides, but only sort of pretty lightly because we don't. We've been told Jarrah swells quite swells a bit. quite a lot, and you don't want to crack it. Don't crack want to yeah, crack all the ribs. So we're yeah. going, to, going to go in very light with that, and then putty the seams and you know any foul and all that sort of stuff. And then just put it in and, and just put it expect in it, it to leak. Yeah. Expect it to yeah. leak, and then hopefully <laughs> slowly stop leaking. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. So these big gaps that we can see here, you they'll. The idea is they'll actually just take up yeah, that whole amount. So some of them, the quite large ones, we're going to spline with hewn pine. Right. So we've got a little bit of hewn down there, and we'll put mastic in that joint. And then as it crushes up, the, either the mastic will splooge out, and the hewn will crush as well. Yeah. And then and then that'll that should take care of them. We don't want to put something real hard in there just in case yeah. it, it stops it from swelling. So yeah. we've just gone real soft and a bit of mastic, so that that will always keep moving and never cure. So when she goes in, you'll just have big pumps in here? Yeah, we'll probably have some sort of battery system, probably the, the battery system set up and some big, um, yeah, 24 volt pumps and then some, we might have a, a, a petrol one up on deck just in case. Yeah. Uh, she starts to go. And you can, you can put her in here at Hastings. And, yeah, we'll put her in here. And, and they a, might let you leave her in the travel lift for a little hopefully while. Hopefully for, you know, 24 hours or so. Yeah. The, the tides here are about three metres, so she'll go some. Mm. Just the slings and stuff, but yeah, hope that's ideal. It's the engine bed there. Yeah, the engine bed's back there. Yep, it's all pretty big there. All and the, the shaft well. should all line up and everything because it's the same engine. Well, and, exactly the same. And the yeah. gearbox. And yeah, and we only just took the engine out a couple of weeks ago. Right. Um, so that yeah. makes you realise how much room there is, doesn't it, when you take the engine out? It's a fair bit of room. It's a pretty large motor for 80 horsepower, though, so. 80 horsepower is a lot. Yeah, it's a yeah. We've been told our surveyor and said, oh, 80, 80 horsepower is a bit much, but. That's what she had in her, so push through a bit of push through a bit of chop. Yeah, so we've obviously so this is an original rib here where it's just all top and bottom and then sort of back through here is where we started to refast and you can see all the plugs that we've plugged old fastings and then we've replugged our brand new Roven rivets, copper nails. So these two ribs have been done. Yeah, yep. Yeah, running all the way back. But this one's still got to be done. Yeah, oh, these I three. think they're actually pretty good. They might stay. They might stay. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, and is this where the that's a stringer? A stringer yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah. So three. Yeah, one, two, and then three. Yep. Yeah. And the keel is an iron. Uh, 
fine keel. It looks like a, yeah, fully ballasted apparently. She had a, um, concrete in the bilge as well, which the old owner, uh, Jack, hammered out. Um, but So yeah, you feel like you may have to put some more weight inside? We might inside? have to put a bit of lead inside, yeah. yeah. We'll have to see how she sits yeah. and once she's fitted out as well. With, yeah, with and how, how she there, sits, so. the trim of it. Yeah, yeah. So, but she, I suspect she might take a little bit of ballasting. And then when you get bored and you've finished everything, you can put a nice round bass for it. Yeah, nice yeah like, like a cooter boat. Yeah, <laughs> That'll be yeah, the last yeah, job. Yeah, the last worry. <laughs> Not important, but... I love the bronze portholes. I yeah, think they're bronze. Two, they're gorgeous, yeah, aren't they? Two in the hull, either side. And you can keep the rudder. Yeah, yeah. It seems yeah, all right. It's all in good nick. Even the fan's pretty good nick, so... Yeah, all that. She's a beautiful shape, isn't she? Yeah, From I love here. how the, the stern sort of tucks right into the transom. It's very pretty. And the transom should be all right? She might go, think? actually. Oh, yeah. On the inside, there's a bit, a bit of rot in there. Of, yeah, a bit of, bit of blue here and there, and a bit of. It look it's not too big a job? No, nah, I think just get a couple of boards together and, and do it here. Yeah. Really being too much of a hassle. I love your attitude. Wait say, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll no, I love it. I'm serious. I'm not like wasn't making fun of it. I'm saying I love it that you know most yeah. people would be wringing yeah. their hands it's going. Like a big jigsaw, isn't it? You know? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, like none of this stuff is. Yeah, that's the beauty of wooden boats. Yeah. Is you know, if something doesn't work, you take it out and put a new bit in. Yeah. You, know? you don't have to answer this, but how much do you think you're going to spend in materials? What do you reckon? I can't say. Good, what do you yeah. reckon? Not real sure. Between 50 and 100? Yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, I'm, you yeah. wouldn't yeah. know exactly. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. not, I mean, then, you know, if your labour is... Yeah, we're, we're labour. <laughs> you know, your labour, but yeah. forget that because, you yeah. know, you're doing it yourselves. Yeah. But Materials aren't too bad, really, timber-wise. Like it's more the, like fastening the, the fastenings and stuff, the copper and the silicon. Fastenings, and then once you get into paint and sails and all yeah. that stuff, yeah. you know, it starts yeah. to get expensive. Yeah. And, all that sort of thing but you know at the end of that you've got an amazing boat that can go anywhere in the world um, with a beautiful personality and you've got the history you've saved and all that sort of thing when if we look across the way at that thing there who's luckily we can't see what name it is um, <laughs> you know somebody will spend 250,000 on that and nobody will even notice mm. yeah 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 Which, um, it's a hard story to sell, but I, I get it. And I think it's nice when some people get it, especially you guys, with some enthusiasm and skills. Really good.